Hi guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about pronouns. So you're going to need your grammar books and turn to page 180. Now, there are two kinds that we're going to talk about, subject pronouns and object pronouns. Now there's a really big trick to this. Probably if the pronoun is at the beginning of the sentence, it's a subject pronoun. And if it's towards the end of the sentence, or at least after the verb, it is probably an object pronoun. So that's just kind of something to tuck away in the back of your mind. Now, if you look at page 180, there are some notes at the top that give you a reminder about what pronouns are. And you've studied pronouns before, so you probably will recognize I, he, she, it. Those are singular. We, they are plural. But there's something new with these, with these notes that I want to point out to you. Um, whatever the pronoun is referring to or whatever it's taking the place of, you know, we always say a pronoun takes the place of a noun. Um, but whatever that thing, that person or that place or that thing that that pronoun is taking the place of, that's called the antecedent. So that's a big fancy word for what the pronoun's taking place of. And you'll see what I'm talking about if you look at the examples under A. The Everglades is a low flat plane. And you see how the Everglades is in bold print? Well, we could replace the Everglades and say, it is a low flat plane. Well, it would be the pronoun and the Everglades would be the antecedent. That's how it works. It's pretty easy. So what I want you to do is do two through 10 and look at the bold words and see if you can figure out a pronoun that would take the place of that. Pause the video and then come back and I'll give you the answers. Okay, back for the answers. Number two would be they. Number three would be she. Number four would be they. Number five would be he. Six, we. Seven, she. Eight, it. Nine, they and 10 we bonus points if you put capital letters because those all came at the beginning of the sentence so hopefully you did that now if you look at b b is just practicing making sure you put the right form of the verb with the pronoun because pronouns and their verbs they have to um they have to match up they have to um have the proper form so that's just a practice with that if you want to do that that's fine but typically um, if you speak correct English you know how to, to match up pronouns with their correct form of the verbs and if you go over to page 184 you will see object pronouns and there are a couple things to point out here me him her it us them you, those are all object pronouns, but I wanted to point out that you and you can be singular or plural. So I can say, you're going to Disney World this summer, and I could be talking about one of you, or I could be talking about all of you. Um, but also, you and it can be subject pronouns, but they also can be object pronouns. So look at those sample sentences. You like to read, subject. I admire you for reading, object. And then it is a great book, subject. Tony will read it, object. So you see how you can use both of those. Now what I want you to do for A is just try to find the pronoun. And then look and see if you can decide whether it's subject or object. You can put S in the line for subject, O in the line for object. All right, so let's look at number one. Here is a book for you. Well, obviously, you is the pronoun. And since it is at the end of the sentence, then it is obviously an object pronoun. So I would underline you and I would put O. So do two through ten and then um, pause the video and come back. All right, so let's look at number two. Number two, the pronoun was it, and it is a subject because it's at the beginning of the sentence. Number three is you, and it is also a subject because it's at the beginning of the sentence. Number four is him, and that would be an object because that comes after the verb. Meg looks for whom? Looks for him. Number five is she, and that, of course, is subject. Number six is her, and that is an object. Number seven is them, and that is an object. And number eight is us, and that is an object. And number nine is me, and that is an object. And number 10 is her, and that is an object. Um, I wanted to point out something really cool. 
that you can do. Um, if you look over on page 181, go back, sorry. I, I missed my geeky nerd moment that I wanted to say something to you about. Look at sentence number 11. I touch a rock from the moon. Do you know you can actually do that? At the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, you can actually touch a moon rock. And it is super cool. You can just put your finger right in that and we'll touch the little moon rock. So keep that in mind if you get to go on the Washington trip, you get to touch a moon rock. Um, so what I want you to do for your grade or a graded assignment is I want you to do um, B on 185 and do 186 just like DOL. And you're going to put your name on that page and tear it out and put it in your folder of work. That's it. So that is subjects and object pronouns. It's not that hard. All right.